So welcome to our flipped lesson on environmental issues in Asia. Today's lesson focus is going to be in three areas. We're going to be looking at air pollution, water pollution, and flooding. All these things in southern and eastern Asia. Our procedure today is we're going to introduce each of these concepts. We'll do a guided reading uh, with each of these. We'll discuss those readings and we'll answer some question prompts. Now remember, since this is a video, you can hit pause at any time, and you don't need a hall pass to go out and get a drink of water. Now I want to remind everyone that in social studies, when we talk about environmental issues, we're talking about how they affect people. We're not dealing with big abstract concepts like global warming or uh, trying to worry about the population of polar bears sometime in the future or or trying to save uh, killer whales. In social studies we worry about people and we worry about environmental issues that affect the lives of people today, not the lives of animals or the greater environment sometime in the future. So our first topic today is going to be a thing called Asian brown cloud. Now if you look at this picture here, this is a satellite image of the area of China over by the Yellow Sea, and you can see the Korean Peninsula over there. Um, and you notice it's kind of hard to see the ground, and, and that's because of this very thick layer of air pollution. This is a special kind of uh, air pollution we call Asian brown cloud. And uh, just in case you're wondering if that air pollution is only way up high in the sky, it's not just high up in the sky. It's also at ground level. That picture over there is a, a ground level picture of people in Beijing, China. And uh, as you can see, they can very much see that brown cloud there and they can't see much else. Now this Asian brown cloud uh, goes hand in hand with uh, economic progress. I mean, the good news is, well, there's a booming economy in Asia. That's good for them. That's uh, bringing wealth to people, uh, bringing progress. Uh, but it's also uh, bringing some negative consequences as well. So I'd like you to go ahead and get out your air pollution reading. And of course, get out a, a pencil and a highlighter. Now, I want you, uh, as we read, I want you to be looking out for certain things. And uh, as, we, as you read, I want you to be able to highlight anything that uh, might answer any of these questions here. What causes Asian brown cloud? What is contained in Asian brown cloud? What, what's in it? What's making it brown, for example? Um, of course, one of the very important questions here, how does Asian brown cloud affect the people of Asia? Uh, and finally, can this pollution be prevented? So as you read, I want you to look for all those things and, uh, and highlight them or underline them if you don't have a highlighter with you today. Now go ahead and pause the video while you read. I'll be waiting right here. All right, we're back. So uh, in summary here, uh, Asian brown cloud is caused by, by three things. Um, it's caused by factories, uh, as we have all this economic progress, um, all this new ec trade and production means that, well, they're producing more things in factories, and those factories are putting out pollution. Uh, as more people are joining the middle class, as more people are, are earning some money over there, more people are driving cars. And uh, all those cars are putting out a certain amount of pollution. And uh, were you expecting the thing about burning wood? Yeah, yeah, a lot of, uh, an awful lot of people in Asia, millions of people are still using uh, wood, uh, wood, either in wood burning stoves or, or, or wood fires uh, to cook their food. And all that wood produces a lot of pollution. Uh, not to mention, of course, the wood being burned in, uh, from forest fires. Um, and we know that air pollution can make people sick, but did you realize that it can uh, keep your food from growing? Yeah, all those particles can uh, block your photosynthesis. It may not prevent plants from growing completely, but it does reduce the amount of food that gets grown. And uh, when you've got a growing population, reducing the amount of food grown is a bad thing. All right, so pause the video while you uh, go ahead and answer the questions on the back of your page. Okay, 
our next topic is water pollution. Um, and uh, we're going to be looking at China and India. And um, the water pollution in both of those places actually come from some very different causes. Um, in China, again, we're going to be looking at uh, economic progress. Um, but uh, we're going to be seeing some different causes for the pollution in India. All right, now water pollution, of course, does affect people directly because, well, people drink water. We need that water. And um, we're going to first look at uh, water pollution in China. Um, so get out your water pollution reading. Now, the water pollution in China and India, they're very different. And we're going to do this reading in two pieces. We're going we're gonna to do first the China component, then the, then the India uh, part of the reading. And we'll also follow up with the uh, questions uh, as we finish each part. So we're going to start with the uh, first part of our reading. That's the, that's the section on China. Uh, and as we read, I want you to look out for uh, these things as we're reading and, and highlight them or underline them. Uh, one of these questions here, what is the major cause of pollution in China's rivers? What has changed in China in recent years that has led to all of this contamination? And how are people in China directly affected by this pollution? A uh, little vocabulary building for you here. In the reading, when it talks about officials in Beijing, know that Beijing is the capital of China. So when they talk about officials in Beijing, they're talking about the government. They're talking about government officials uh, and their response. So go ahead and pause the video while you read the first few paragraphs there, the section on China. Okay. So most of this uh, water pollution in China is coming from industrial chemicals from those factories. And, you know, with the, with the booming economy, they're producing a lot of stuff in those factories, a lot of stuff that we use here in America, in fact. Um, the problem is those industrial chemicals uh, very often are ending up in the rivers. And uh, those industrial chemicals can cause some pretty serious illnesses. Uh, and not the, not the, you know, we get sick for a week and uh, then get better. We're talking some serious permanent, uh, uh, permanent illnesses there. Um, some of those chemicals uh, are, are heavy metals. And heavy metals are almost impossible to clean out of a river. Very, very difficult to, to clean the stuff up. And so what we're seeing in China here are some of the negative effects of their economic success. Um, the booming economy is really good for people, but you know, we're seeing there's some definitely some bad things too. Okay, why don't you pause the video um, for a couple of minutes while you go ahead and answer questions one through three on the back of the ring. Only worry about one through three. We'll do the others later. Okay. So now we're going to be uh, reading our section here about water pollution in India. Now remember, the most important river in India, biggest most important river in India is the Ganges. Okay. Now, as we're reading our section here about water pollution in India, um, I want you to look for certain things. Uh, this time I want you to look for any anything that might uh, help answer these questions. How is water pollution in India different from water pollution in China? And yes, it is very different. Um, why has the pollution in India's rivers increased recently? And how effective have efforts been to clean up the Ganges? They have been doing some things to try to clean it up. How, how effective have those been? So go ahead and pause the video uh, while you read. Uh, I'll be waiting right here. Uh, got a snack, I think. Okay. So, um, the water pollution in India is uh, primarily coming from yeah, untreated sewage. Yeah, um, as the population grows over there, and yes, the population in India is growing uh, quite steadily, a very large population in India. Um, but as that population grows, it's overwhelming the wastewater treatment systems they have there to treat sewage. And of course, um, if uh, the treatment systems can't get it, that sewage ends up in the Ganges. Um, and you know the Ganges that's very important to the people of India you know it's uh, not only a, a, the major source of water it's a major source of uh, economics there and has huge religious significance to Hindus 
The good news is that uh, sewage is a lot easier to treat than industrial chemicals. And uh, in the long run, if um, India's government can, uh, can get itself organized on treating, on you know, building up these wastewater treatment systems, um, the river can heal. And, um, and this problem can, can be fairly easily solved. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, pause the video and uh, see about answering questions 4 through 7 on the back of your reading. All right, now we're going to turn to our flooding reading. So uh, go ahead and get out that uh, page. Um, flooding in Asia is coming from two sources, really. The two main sources of flooding are the monsoons and the rivers. Uh, and monsoons we've talked about in class. And you can see this picture here is uh, from a, a pretty bad monsoon season in India. And as you can see, uh, it's land is flooded for miles, for miles uh, from those monsoons. Now, um, in China, their biggest uh, threat from flooding is not, mon is not the monsoons, although they do get some monsoons there too. Their biggest threat is the rivers. China has some very powerful rivers, and those rivers can uh, do some serious damage. Okay, so uh, interestingly, you know, the flooding, unlike the air pollution and the water pollution, flooding is not a human-created uh, environmental issue. This is uh, very much, uh, you know, something coming from nature. So like the last reading, we're going to go ahead and break this one up also. So we're not going to read it all in one chunk. We're going to take, uh, we're going to take it in pieces. So we're going to start with the monsoon piece here. We're going to read the first section, which is on the monsoons in India. Um, and I want you to go ahead and highlight any clues for uh, these prompts here. Um, what is a monsoon? Um, we kind of discussed that in class already, but it's good to uh, review that. Um, what are some of the bad consequences of the monsoon season? And why does India need the monsoons? So be, be on the lookout for those uh, topics. So go ahead and pause the video while you read. Okay, now the monsoons... You'll remember this is that seasonal rain, the seasonal rain that brings lots and lots and lots of rain, lots of water that uh, the region needs for farming. Um, this is these monsoon rains can last for months, um, and it's good because it it brings uh, the water they need for farming. You know the the silt from the flooding helps to restore fields, but it also um, it also, you know, the flooding itself can kill people, and it also can bring diseases. Remember, there's a, a lot of those diseases are, are waterborne diseases that they deal with, and diseases spread by mosquitoes. Uh, and mosquitoes love standing water. Okay, go ahead and pause the video while you answer questions one through three, only questions one through three, on the back of your page. Okay, in China, their flooding problem is coming from the rivers. Um, in fact, um, one of those rivers was nicknamed China's Sorrow. So by the way, be on the lookout as we're, as we're reading the section here about rivers. Um, look out for uh, what river is, has been nicknamed China's Sorrow. Also pay attention to what the government of China is uh, trying to do to control the rivers and to what degree that seems to be working or not working. Now, um, if you, you're going to encounter a term in there that you may not have dealt with before. It's a term is called a floodplain. Now, floodplain, these are these low, flat areas near rivers uh, that tend to flood a lot. Now, they're really good for farming because they're flat. Of course, you need flat land for farming. The, fertile, the, the, the soil is very fertile because there's a lot of silt from the rivers in there. And, uh, and some of those rivers in China do have some very good silt in them. Uh, so it's good fertile soil. It's flat, really great for farming, but uh, of course it floods. And so that, that's a problem. You don't want to live in the floodplain if you can avoid it. Okay, uh, time to pause uh, the video and uh, read the section about China's rivers.
Okay, so um, we're back, and uh, isn't it interesting how very powerful the Huang He River is? You know, um, I never realized a river could kill that many people, millions, millions of people killed by this one river. Um, so that's a uh, that's uh, amazing. That's really that's shocking. Um, and it looks like the Chinese government are, is engaged in this uh, man versus nature type battle over there. I mean, they're building all these dams. These rivers have been flowing for millions, about millions of years, and they're trying to control them with these dams. And uh, you know, long term, I don't know if that's going to work, but they they're sure going to give it a try. Okay, go ahead and uh, answer the questions on the back. Pause the video. I'll talk to you again in a moment. Hey, looks like we're done. So um, make sure you go over those uh, those questions and uh, be ready to discuss what you read uh, when when you come to class. Okay. Um, by the way, just so you know, the pause button uh, it doesn't work on your teacher when you're in class, only in the video.